What's good? What's good, party people? Welcome to Candid Conversations. I am your host, Candia Johnson, a woman on a mission to help you show up and speak up anyway, despite dealing with fear, uncertainty, or self-doubt. So I am fresh off of a social media detox. And initially, I thought it would be three days. It's been 30 plus days now. (laughs) I feel so much lighter, more joyful. I've had the most profitable month of the entire year in my business. My health is good. My vision is crystal clear. And my intentions are set for 2022. While silence is often considered a weakness, I'm here to tell you silence is also a superpower. One of my favorite quotes by Oprah Winfrey is, and I'm paraphrasing a bit, but sometimes you have to distance yourself from the voices of the world so you can hear your own voice loud and clear. Do you have the courage to get distant and totally unplug from all the things? Do you have the courage to let go of your fear of missing out on things? They call that FOMO, the fear of missing out, the feeling that other people are probably having more fun or experiencing more and better things than you are. So you want to constantly stay in tune or connected to that. I've fallen fallen into that trap as well. And so my detox started from this feeling in the middle of my chest. It's indescribable, but I've had this feeling before. So I know for me, this feeling is an indication or an indicator that I am out of alignment with myself, my truth, my intentions for my life, or I'm about to be (laughs) out of alignment. That feeling in my chest lets me know that. And I believe that to be true for many of us, I believe that we can feel it before it becomes a thing, before we start to question ourselves, before we start to feel like we're not good enough, before we start to ask yourself. And I don't believe questioning yourself is such a bad thing, but constantly questioning yourself. Why am I doing this? Am I doing enough? What brings me joy again? (laughs) Just constantly questioning and badgering yourself because you are perceiving things that other people are doing or experiences that other people are having. And next thing you know, you're spiraling into frustration, confusion, or overwhelm. And so I was struggling to settle into any activity. And the next thing you know, I'm doom scrolling on social media, lovingly stalking people for way too long. Because y'all know, don't act like y'all be lovingly stalking people. It's okay. But sometimes it's overkill. (laughs) On top of everything else, thanks to therapy, I know I have an inner mean girl who likes to measure and judge me. (laughs) So when she's talking and doing too much, I know it's time for me to pause, unplug and recharge uninstall the apps on my phone. I did put a post up on my Instagram stories and my Facebook stories, letting my people know. But after the first couple of days, after I uninstalled the apps, I'm not gonna lie, it was hard because you're resisting the urge to pick up your phone and scroll or check the news. That's another thing I unplugged from. Now, I only unplugged from the news for maybe two to three weeks, but social media has been the longest hiatus A couple of years ago, I came across this article of a few people who did it for a year, and I definitely could see that. If I didn't have a business, I could see that. Now, the good thing is, the test for me is I also realized that I don't have to have a business that's solely tied to social media because, again, November and December were my most profitable months for training and coaching. That was a testimony for me. But I know that if you don't have a habit Because listen, you could have a business that's relying on social media and still disappear. You can schedule and automate those things. But I do believe that if you don't have a habit of filtering out the noise from all the things, social media, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all the things, even some of the people in your life, because y'all know, listen, many of us got some killjoys, okay? They kill the joy in the room within the first two seconds that they enter. (laughs) And if you don't have a habit of choosing 
the energy that you allow in your space, if you don't have a habit of physically and mentally removing yourself from certain experiences and news and post updates and all the things, you will unintentionally lose sight of the things you know you've been called to do. And not having that habit of filtering out, you can also unintentionally silence or minimize your own voice because next thing you know, you're so focused on everybody else's business, you're not working on your own business. And when I say that, I'm not only talking to entrepreneurs, I'm talking to everyone. (laughs) Your day-to-day job doesn't even matter. Also, I want you to remember that when you're struggling with those thoughts and feelings, those negative thoughts and feelings, I want to remind you that the problem isn't that you're having those negative thoughts or feelings. It's natural. Don't beat yourself up. The problem is you're allowing them to run around in your head unattended like a two-year-old or three-year-old child. You know how you leave a two-year-old or three-year-old alone for a little bit in the room and next thing you know, it's two seconds later and they don't wreak havoc on the room. That's your negative and limiting thoughts (laughs) when you let them run around in your head unattended. So you have to learn how to unplug rest and remain silent and recharge often because resting is a superpower. And it's not about the physical eight to 12 hours of sleep because let's get it. Don't get it twisted. Some of y'all I know could sleep for eight to 12 hours, but you still wake up feeling confused, scattered and all over the place and overwhelmed. Resting is about making time for being versus doing. It's about making time for being versus thinking your way out of things. It's making time for being versus avoiding. And let me be clear, when you're scrolling on social media, that's what you're doing. You're avoiding. You're avoiding something that you want to do or something that you don't want to feel. Nine times out of 10, especially when you're doing that doom scrolling thing. And so finding the courage to unplug and remain silent is your key to finding and creating clarity for yourself. It is your key for making things easier and giving yourself some relief or just feeling a little refreshed. It's one of the reasons why I have fallen in love with gardening. So if you've been following me for some time, especially on Instagram or Facebook and my stories, You know that I always post my gardening shenanigans. And one of the things that gardening has taught me is that even when I walk outside to my backyard and it seems like my kale, broccoli, or onions are not thriving, they're not growing, the leaves look the same as they did last week, next thing you know, I'm calling my sister like, girl, this Vegetable garden is not given what it's supposed to have gave. <laughs> Maybe I need to start over next year. And then one day I walk outside and I see the most beautiful crown of green broccoli. And I start to smell the scent of my red onions. And I could see the bulbs from the onions are starting to grow larger And so that gardening process speaks volumes about being patient. That process reminds me that even during rest, your growth is unstoppable. You're still growing even while you are resting. Even during rest, you are worthy. You have to unplug and rest to recharge people. It may feel uncomfortable to sit around and do nothing. But just because it feels uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not good for you. Please don't underestimate what being tuned into a constant 24-7 news cycle can do to your mind and your spirit. Your ability to unplug, your ability to detach, your ability to be silent is not a weakness. And here's another thing. I realize we live in a time where we take better care of our phones than we take care of ourselves. Some of us have insurance on our phones, but not on our lives. Some of us have screen protectors to protect our phones from scratches and dents and not, you know, getting damaged when you hit it against the hard surface. But we have no way to guard our hearts, minds, and our bodies. We have an app to protect our phone from hackers and and protect our data on the phone. 
but no one process or app to protect and keep your peace of mind in check. And listen, I'm calling myself to the front of the congregation. I'm calling myself to the chopping block because I'm guilty of it too. We are obsessed with taking care of a phone, a physical object that can be replaced when the reality is you can't replace yourself. We will find anywhere to plug our phones in to be recharged. We will befriend a stranger so that we can use their phone charger to get back to doing all the things, but we won't take time to recharge ourselves. Even when you think about keeping your battery charged. So the other day I had to go to the T-Mobile store because my, my screen protector was peeling off my phone. I was hiding in fish grease, y'all, because the people talked me into paying $24 for a screen protector and then I had to go back and get it replaced maybe two months later because it was peeling. And so the guy was replacing the film on the, the phone and he looked at my phone and my battery was low. And so he was telling me that, you know, you don't really want to let your battery die. You want to keep it at a level between 45% and 75%. And he was also said that the best way to charge your phone is a little out of time. So first of all, y'all know my inner mean girl was like, man, mind your business and put this gazillion dollar screen protector on my phone so I can get out of here and go get me something to eat. But on a serious note, it got me to thinking, how do you know when you're at your 45% and you need to recharge? How often are you creating time to recharge your mind, body, and soul? What's the source of your recharge? How often are you prepared to plug into your source to recharge when your mind gets the best of you and starts telling you that this thing or this idea that you're trying to bring into the world or that you're actively working on, when your mind starts to tell you that that thing is a waste of time, when your mind says you're not good enough, when your mind tells you that there are way more people with way more experience than you, what's the source of your recharge? Let me give you a hint. You need more than one source to recharge. Just like I know that many of you probably have more than one charger. You have a charger in your bedroom. You have a charger in the car. You probably leave a charger at work. <laughs> you probably have a portable charger or a power pack. You can power up anywhere. So guess what? Personally, you need more than one charger. What are your sources for a recharge? And nowadays... Does a vacation really count as a recharge? Because I need to call some of y'all out. For some of you, taking a vacation is no longer for rest and relaxation because you often fall into the trap of wanting to take a picture of every single thing. And I'm going to call the ladies out, okay? Because I know we have to get the perfect angle and the dress ain't looking right, the outfit ain't looking right. And then you take the picture a gazillion times. And next thing you know, that's hours of work. And so are you really resting or are you trying to get the best picture to prove like you're well rested and unbothered? And so I even had to resist the urge during the social media de detox when I would go out and have dinner or lunch with friends. My family, we took a trip to, it's a short little trip to uh, Bush Gardens to see the Christmas lights, all the things you do around the holidays. And I had to resist the urge to post about it. For what? For why? <laughs> I had to resist the urge to post about some of the exciting things that was happening in my life and my business or in wins that I was having or making in my business. And I'm like, for what and for why? Why do I feel the need to post and share? Why? <laughs> Not saying I won't ever do it, but I do believe at times you have to just resist that urge and just focus on being and learning how to celebrate by yourself. Sometimes you can win in silent. It's okay. I believe that when you constantly are connected to wanting other people to clap for you, you get tuned into that. You expect it. And when it doesn't happen for you, it rips you to shreds. Learn how to win in silent. So it's not like a vacation it can't be your source for a recharge. But I do believe you should be mindful of why you're doing certain things like the pictures, the heavy picture posting and sharing constantly. So my other sources for a recharge, I have a multitude of sources, but I like 
to color. I have gardening. I call these mindless activities. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just spending endless hours listening or observing my own thoughts. I may try a little meditation, recognizing a pattern of my thoughts, those things I can't stop thinking about. I like to listen to music. I love, love, love some Tony Jones affirmations for the grown ass woman. She was actually on the podcast earlier in 2021. She also just released another album. I need to invite her back on the podcast, but I listen to music. I listen to certain podcasts or I may reread books <laughs> about how the brain and how your mind works to help me get my mind right. So the four agreements, untethered soul, uh, the power of now. And so I love reading books, y'all. It's so helpful in helping me understand myself and helping my clients understand themselves as well. I get a little geeky every now and then, but I'm fascinated by this stuff because I feel like this is the stuff that they should have told us in elementary school. A lot of us would be less hard on ourselves if we understood how our brain often works against us and how we are not our thoughts. So anywho, it's so important that during a recharge, you just get in tune to hearing and listening to you and learning how to trust yourself and following up on your ideas and doing things simply because you have the urge to do them, but you can't feel, really figure out why. Yeah, do them during those periods where you have decided to recharge. So maybe after you finish doing five days of nothingness, which is totally cool, start to do some things just because have some just because moments okay and then I have God listen I'm not gonna get too spiritual on you but let me say this when I decided to design this new life for myself I had to get clear that I couldn't do it alone I believe in fact you can't level up alone and so knowing that I am co-creating my life with God I know I can't do certain things I know I can't respond react in certain ways. Because listen, y'all, I'm a Brooklyn, New York girl, okay? Brooklyn, New York raised me, although I live in the suburbs right now. I sometimes, my thoughts get a little hood, okay? I stay in a New York state of mind, no matter where I go. And so sometimes I have to say to myself, girl, Candia, you can't, you can't say those sort of things. You can't do those sorts of things. You're co-creating your life with the G-O-D. You can't do those sorts of things. That's how I refer to him, okay? The G-O-D. So, for me, some of the things that I know that, you know, when I'm considering going left, when I really know my intention is to go right, I remind myself, you have a co-founder and he's not going to go for these types of activities and shenanigans, Candia. So God is a part of my source. <laughs> and knowing that I cannot do all the things by myself, knowing that there's a source something greater than myself that's helping me along in this journey, I respond <laughs> in certain ways. And I have to exercise my pause and understand that it's okay for me to rest, that I'm still worthy, that things are still working in my favor. Now, don't get it twisted. Sometimes I let the little Brooklyn girl come out. I know Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. I'm not there yet. Okay. That's why I got a co-founder. That's why God is my co-founder. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going off on tangents. Anywho, rest is a superpower. Identify your sources for rest and recharge. I was even thinking that coming into 2022, that I need to find a way to do a digital detox at least once a month. And that's going to be a contingent on me creating automations and all the things because I don't want to disappear frequently, but it just feels so good. The funny thing is over the last two years, especially since the pandemic hit, I realized how uncomfortable I was with silence because so for me, I have corporate clients. I also have individual clients. And so the bulk of my leadership training sessions are conducted on Zoom. And sometimes I ask, you know, my group a question and there's an uncomfortable silence that takes place. And so while people are trying to formulate their own answers or responses or trying to figure out how they're going to respond during that brief moment of silence, it feels like forever. And then my brain is like, oh my, oh gosh, these people are not engaged. 
they probably hate me. They're not having fun. And so that process was a little awkward at first. Now I'm comfortable with it because I know that when it comes to training in an online environment, being patient and just letting the silence be is okay. People have to think about how they're going to engage and respond to your questions. And we are so used to being connected to noise. We are so used to being connected to a constant filter of updates and information that we become incredibly uncomfortable during silence. I do understand on the one hand, though, silence is a double-edged sword because I always tell leaders that if you are leading a meeting and people are silent or they're constantly in agreement with you, that's also a sign that you may have a problem (laughs) because people may be afraid to speak up. So I do understand that silence is a double-edged sword. At the same time, Sometimes being silent is the loudest thing you can do. Sometimes doing nothing is the best something that you can do. And so finding a realm of mindless activities is key. Allowing yourself maybe five days to just get curious about what you're feeling so you can hear your own voice and hear what you really need and want at this time. After my period of nothingness, I start asking myself some questions to really try to figure out where this, those feelings came from. Like, how have I been spending my days? Am I spending my days consuming more information or creating more? When I'm spending my days consuming more, that's the root of my problem. (laughs) Also, who am I spending my time with? Let's just face it. We got some people in our lives. Like I said, they are killjoys. Get rid of them. Also, who are you following on social media? If they're constantly being negative or talking about a bunch of conspiracy theories or they constantly have relationship drama, work drama every single day, get rid of them, hide them, block them, delete them from your timeline. You know, you have to learn how to put a price tag on your energy. Your energy is currency. Everybody can't afford your energy. Just stop giving your energy away and you do that. When you constantly expose yourself to other people's drama or issues, everyone should not have access to your energy. And sometimes it's not about having or giving people access to you physically, like in a physical sense. Most times, especially now, it applies to the digital environment as well. Scrolling past people, reading their two sentences or 20 sentences of drama is just too much. You love them, but you need to love them from afar because they're taking you off your game. Also look at the fears and insecurities that are influencing your actions. Again, when you're scrolling, you're actually avoiding something. If you're struggling with uh, perfection, you're probably running from or avoiding judgment. And the bottom line is, I hate to sound harsh. I don't hate to sound harsh. It is what it is. Judgment and criticism is the price you pay when you share or put your ideas out into the world. That's just what it is. We have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And so during this period of rest, you're giving yourself an opportunity to do nothing. (laughs) You're also giving yourself an opportunity to figure out what's the real root of my problem. Because I'm going to tell you, social media ain't your problem. Social media is not the problem. It's how you're using it. It's what you're using it to replace in your life. It's how you're using it um, as a tool to feel something or to not feel something. Social media ain't your problem. At the same time, rest is also a test. If you decide to rest for five days and engage in some mindless work and you can't stop thinking about the goal or you can't stop thinking about the thing, for me, that's always a sign you should just go for it. (laughs) You should just go for it. You should just try it because your brain ain't going to let you stop thinking about it. Now, if you take that break and you're not thinking about it anymore, then let it go. But I feel like it's just an easy test (laughs) to see uh, whether you should try something. You know how people say you can't pour from an empty cup? Many of you have to realize you have a job to do every single day and that job requires that you probably pour into others. Then you come home and you have to pour into your children or your significant other. Next thing you know, you have to pour into the dog and the cat needs some love too. (laughs) 
So while you may not be able to pause and unplug from the kids or the significant other at the moment, you can pause from outside sources like news that are not serving your spirit at the moment. So if there are three things that I want you to take away from me today, it's one, make it a priority to recharge by unplugging and resting so that you could recharge your spirit and your energy and get focused on reconnecting with your voice and the vision that you have for your life and what you need to feel supported. You don't always have to have something to say or share. Number two is to take that time and then reflect to gain clarity and get clear. When you are constantly tuned in and connected to so many voices that you are scrolling past every day through people's perfectly curated lives on social media, it becomes disruptive to your vision that you have for your life. And so you have to reflect to really get clear on who you are and where you're headed and what really matters to you. And the last piece that I want to offer you is at the end of your digital detox, whether that's a day or two to three days or five days or 50 days, is to redesign your life for a return to social media. I didn't record this episode to bash social media and say that everyone should quit social media. That's not my intention. Although I could see me at one point just saying, I'm done with social media forever. Peace, y'all. Because it comes with so much freedom. Freedom of thought. Freedom to create a hell of a lot more productivity. But for now, I'm not. So I would say to redesign your life for social media by asking yourself, how can you make your social media platforms work for you instead of work against you. Nine times out of 10, if you're spending more time consuming content versus creating the content for it, it's going to work against you. So based on who you are and and what you're striving towards, whether that's a promotion at work or maybe you're looking for a new job or maybe you want to reach more uh, people to listen to your podcast or your blog, then being very intentional about how you show up on social media, offering value, creating value for people, that should be your daily focus and you can automate a lot of those things so that you are not entirely tuned in to the consumption of it all. I would recommend too that you consider digital wellness apps that you probably have native to your phone. Like when you buy a new phone, it comes with a series of different applications that you can access. Consider using those digital wellness apps to block your access to social media for two to three hours or five hours. I am actually taking advantage of the digital wellness apps on my phone as well as my desktop so that I can get back into the habit of being focused on completing or reviewing one to two things at a time only. Because listen, y'all, your girl, sometimes I'll be having like a gazillion tabs open on my computer and then I got the phone going. And I believe that's a reflection that your life is all over the place. So your girl is getting her life right, okay? Or your girl has got her life right. Let's say that. So instead of using social media to design your life, social media should be a compliment to what you do, but your life shouldn't be dependent on it. And so I've seen so many people fall into the trap of using social media to design their life. They're figuring out vacations and things they want to experience simply because it's going to look good for Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook, or maybe the content is going to be viral. But is it good for you? Is it good for your spirit? (laughs) Is it something that you really want to do? So Ultimately, get focused on what really matters to you. Stop taking care of your phone better than you take care of yourself. Let's trade your fear of missing out and embrace the joy of missing out. I guarantee you the world is going to be okay. Okay, party people, let's hold each other accountable for that. That is my soapbox for today. I would love to know if you've ever taken a social media or a digital detox. I know that there are like vacations that you can take where 
you can actually give your devices to the concierge (laughs) during your vacation and they will lock them up and keep them away from you so you can enjoy your vacation. Would you do something that extreme? I don't know. I may. Y'all let me know in the comments. If this episode touched your heart in any way, share it with your people. Talk soon.